And um, I'm delighted to introduce Dario back on for a few more stats and projections. Uh, Dario, great. Uh, hello, everyone. Little note to self, don't present OTT after Cinch presentation, because they've said it all better than I could. So, but now I'm gonna use something special, which is I'm gonna be using you. Let's pretend it's a pantomime. It's, if you're in the UK, you probably know what it is. It's that celebration when everybody goes and boos and say yes and no. Now, next, um, uh, we thought or putting together together some of the thoughts, some of the ideas, some of the numbers we've been collecting at uh, uh, at MEF. MEF, as you know, it's a place to discuss. Um, there is no truth out there. Numbers are not real either at MEF, but they do serve us as a tool to start conversations, to start some of those discussions. So I'd like to take you for a little uh, walk through all of the numbers we've been collecting, and you should be feel free to uh, shout at them, um, and we'll give you a microphone as well. We'd like to record the shouting sessions as well. Now, here we go. Let's start. We're going to be talking about lots of things today. Well, that's what I thought at the beginning, because uh, maybe it's always worth to restate what omnichannel is or what it could be. Um, but omnichannels probably should talk about their channels. What are they doing? So what are they? Well, how do they work? And then really something that is very close to the meth heart is identity, but it seems to be closer and closer to the omni-channel question as well. And commercial models, business, implementations, how the industry is structured, those are so key, such key topics, which we're not going to be talking about today. Because instead, we have specific working groups that do a lot of work, and that those are real big questions that are really interesting right now. And I'd like to maybe start, maybe discuss it with you. No time. Because I have a lot of slides, so you will see me clicking a lot. Now, what we do sometimes at MEF is an um, it being a place where people discuss, and we find that for discussions, you need to have a common terms and common terminology, a common language, very, very difficult. Each time MEF puts uh, definitions out there, usually we get a small revolution. People say, no, that's not the one. But you hold in quiet. So officially, at least online, no question, no. Officially, this might be a, one of those definitions of the sticks. Multi-channel probably is not very controversial the way it's established. And disconnected channels, they all work, they, they are fast, and that's how SMS developed. Uh, the idea of omni-channel, that becomes a bit more difficult, and we've discussed it, we heard it even yesterday, whether omni-channel really exists yet, or how long it's gonna take for omni-channel. Uh, take your own pick of what that definition is, and you can also establish how close we are to it or not. But being customer-centered and integrated and seamless as an experience is pretty hard, as we know, in the best of case. Uh, however, it stands there as something we'd like to do. So, but it, it is the ability for the customer to reclaim its own identity and say, I can talk here, there, and there. I'm part of the use cases. Please don't tell me to do all the work myself to come back and tell you who I am. Even plan ahead, expect me to start on a shop to receive an SMS or something else. Now, what we've also been uh, talking for the last few years is the idea that there is something out there, and we've heard it before as well, which is conversational commerce. What if the success of messaging becomes a platform to do more than just telling them, a oh, notification, we're delivering your parcel out there. What if it becomes a a meaningful conversation between a brand, which is a persona, which is not really existing, and a customer itself. Well, that's probably a, a dream for a marketeer. You could even say conversational marketing, but it might sound a bit too fluffy. And it's, it's kind of real, and it really brings business. That's the idea. And it works across the different stages of your marketing funnel out there. So you might start from awareness, but you really expected to build over time a conversation, a report, a relation with a user, which will actually follow throughout the different stages of the uh, marketing funnel. So going back to buying, converting, but also activating, supporting them, renewing them, expanding, uh, upselling, etc. So far so good? You've been so quiet that I think that all of this is not officially 
you know, gold standard from math? Well, I think not. I'm waiting for the emails that are going to come later. And I'm really waiting for them because this is what we should be doing. We should take these things apart, rebuild them, understand an improvement. That what our industry needs to do is to engage, not just philosophically with this, but really on what that means for us day, day in, day out. So if we compare with them, and I've done, trying, done some, some minimum comparisons, uh, what multi-channel seems to have been focusing was on who could I connect with. The messages with, I have Russia. Do you give me Colombia? <laughs> which operator? Which, well, actually, what rate? Because that was a part of the competition as well. Was actually the most common thing uh, to dis describe the A2P market for a long time. With omnichannel, that comes as a secondary term. You expect that you already have all of those. You have the connectivity, but you're really trying to understand is, who am I talking to? Is it the same user? You know, what message should I be delivering to this person? Um, in conversational commerce, things get even more complicated because you actually want to have a minimum, an, in, an intelligent conversation. And sometimes you do it with artificial intelligence. Now, given that human intelligence seems to have real problems to have meaningful conversations with customers, you know, for even poor artificial intelligence, you know, it's pretty high there as an expectation. Nevertheless, it can happen. But what we're really talking about is moving from a single use case to a chain of use cases in omnichannel and finally in conversational commerce to a mapping and orchestrations of a relationship, which is many, many more use cases. Now, one thing that I'd like to talk to all of us is if we think that uh, SMS is big as a market, and we heard it yesterday, and I think it was one of the main points we got it from uh, the, the company that provides real numbers, you should look at them, you know, uh, Mobile Square. They were saying, no, look at multiple use cases. There's much more that SMS itself could be done. Or my suggestion is SMS and other tools put together could be applied in so many new um, marketing opportunities and commercial fields. So, based on that, seems to be a natural, gradual uh, evolution. It might not be. It might be one step after the other, but it might not exactly go there. And what we're not saying, um, given the feedback of some of our uh, members, it's not like you need to do all of that. It's not like that everybody has to be running a conversational commerce platform or something like that. There are lots of opportunity in connectivity, and you can specialize in connectivity, if that is still what you want to do. There is an APIs and marketing automation kind of a layer, and definitely that's where a lot of the focus is right now. And relevance, which has always been an issue, is probably where conversational commerce and the additional tools that conversational commerce are focused on. My, it might be that we will be seeing more specializations. There might be some companies that do everything. Uh, nobody's booing, so yes, that's true. Um, but really, I think we need to look at these together and, and be excited by the uh, growth, the potential growth. What we're saying is that, and we've seen it somewhere else, so that this is not a single SMS market, but this is a huge market. This is not a single use case. This is not just a, a notification market. It could be an anything market. It could be a commerce market. It can be transactions. It can be a lot of things in there. However, in, increased complexity, and I believe partnership, discussions, specializations, internal and organic growth, everything is potentially there. We heard yesterday from the CEO of um, uh, Root Mobile, and of, uh, which he said, so that he didn't agree with you, he said, no guys, you need to have a different view, which is a UCAS step. And he said, what we need to do, focus next, is managing the business analytics around omnichannel. Make it easy to operate and plan and understand what your campaign is. I like that. And it could be another way to, to develop it and to another steps in between, or it could be a completely different branch. But I think what he agreed as well is we need to expand the use cases and we need to understand the new channels that are coming forward. And finally, we'll talk about it later, all of this is be based on the idea of user identity. Get to know your customer. From the simple thing is, who is your customer? Who is this? To what does it want? What is it expecting? 
So, excited you are? I think we need more coffee in the room. I don't know online, but there we are going. But because now I got the pleasure of presenting lots of numbers, and numbers make me look smart. So I tried very hard to put as many as I could. Let's see if that makes any impact on you. But actually, I didn't make them up. I have to admit, I don't have that much imagination, but it comes from a lot of research we do here. And uh, this year we published 30 reports, in case you missed it. That's one of the latest, which is called SMS and OTT messaging. Voila, perfect. Uh, it's a consumer research, 10 countries, uh, as we do it every year, so we're comparing like for like, and we have a lovely trends to see in there. Members have got access not just to the reports, but all to the, um, to the raw data. And then with that, we also added and cross-referenced something else. So be, please do, do use these reports and, and see what I came up with out of them. Let's look at 2021. And as we do a math, we have some sort of a funnel to make sure when we analyze some of the numbers out there, that it makes sense. We start from the very basic. How many people, how many humans are there? Uh, the world uh, population, according to the World Bank, is 7.8 billion. But very interesting for us, we always try to put another element, which is how many of those are adults, 16 plus, you could say 14, but that's, because they need to be agent. Uh, in some countries, you cannot market to people that are below 16, they cannot buy something, it might not be even legal, it might not be ethical, you choose one. But that's why we think we really need to reduce the number. And how many of those uh, 5.7 billion have got a mobile phone? Well, well 4.7, so our margins have reduced. Still very big numbers, and that's the message, still the same. How many of those have got a smartphone? So that's 3.5. How many of those have got a laptop? That's 2.7. How many have got, would have, how many of those would have only a laptop? Is about 10%, so. Or internet should just be below 4 billion access to internet. And these are monthly, or some sort of monthly usage expectations. Now, why we do that is to put things in context, just to remind, remind ourselves how many adults, so we look at, have got access to social media. And that has been a great success over the last few years, because it was 3.2 billion. It's lower than what is reported many, many other places, but it's a fantastic number nevertheless. I mean, we might have done all this work to only to reduce by 20%, but it's still a meaningful meaningful number. How many of those are using messaging apps? So not SMS, but messaging apps. That's 3.1 billion. A bit of a surprise for some. That is in itself bigger than SMS, which is 2.7. By messaging apps, we have to remember how many there are and how many overlaps there is. A couple of messaging apps would claim to probably be close to that number. We would challenge them because we don't think it's necessarily the same uh, definition. Compare that with um, web browser, 2.6 billion. Numbers is going down. We'll see but and how many users are using adult, uh, um, how many adults are using emails? 2.1, uh, which is a bit of a, not a surprise for many, but it's, it's big, but it's, it's not that huge. Anybody would like to shout now and say something? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have a microphone, but we'll probably come in. I'll try to repeat. Mina is running in the back. Some great stuff here, Dario. So th the key for conversational messaging is really about understanding how many of these messaging apps and SMS are open for an individual user. So for example, I'm quite happy to receive messages in SMS, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, um, I don't like people sliding into my DMs in Facebook Messenger and in Instagram. So it would be fascinating to understand how many open apps for individuals there are that could be addressable channels for our industry. Very good questions, because you're going exactly um, first, you say something positive about the numbers. So yes. Uh, and secondly, you point out of the thing that I'm really doing. I mean, we're not doing a great job in terms of giving you all the insight available. What we real insight is what you need to go there is preference. At this point, and we'll build it up, at this point, it's not a question of reach. One of those little themes at the beginning is a post-reach area. It was really important a few years ago to say how many 
customers you had on a certain platform. It almost doesn't matter as much now. It's what you are saying. His, is this the right channel for the right message at the right time for this person? And that becomes a much more granular and a much more difficult and you will grow the complexity, the value added. That's where you find it. We'll actually have the slides. If, I'll tell you after this slide if I, if I answer some of your questions. Well, maybe not. But um, first I want to tell you how it's going trend-wise, um, which is are they growing or not? And yes, they are, most of them are growing. Uh, surprisingly, the social media uh, is still growing. Actually, it is specific who is growing in social media and who is coming next is very important. But messaging is growing much faster. SMS, we know uh, this was the first year when SMS officially in our stats was in terms at least, well, let's say volume and so on, it was overtaken by WhatsApp, uh, let's say, and the rest and the friends officially. Uh, as, a, as globally and also by WhatsApp singly in terms of traffic, in terms of reach, which is a, a big thing. Uh, but it still remains a single, incredible, and, su and super trustworthy uh, platform and universal. Uh, but what we've seen, 2020 was a special year for email. Maybe in some countries with a lockdown, we saw email being used more. For every year, email has been going down, down, down. One of the reasons for emails um, kind of failing in, in the graduation, this is pretty much because, well, people are getting annoyed by the amount of messages they receive on email. And it's not just the messages, they, the spam messages, the anti-spam, is some of the annoyance seems to be with the amount of messages they subscribe to and that they end up receiving, because they say, oh, too many. So they, that inbox, you end up, the number of people checking their email yearly, we do record that. It's big, but the number of people that do like these, it, the monthly check on email is going down massively. And the reason is that you still have an email account, but you're very, you know, there's a bit of, do I want to check it and go through all of my spam and wrong messages? The inbox is what matters, not and how much you use it, not the notification you're getting, not the fact that you have an email account. That's the activity is what we want to trace because that's what we should be focusing with you. Am I taking too much on these? I'm having too much fun. So I can tell you, team, now this is going to be a two hours and a half session. Um, but here we go. Uh, looking at numbers, everybody likes numbers, and here are some of the big platforms. There is really only one thing to say. They are big, because as you wanted. And just copying the previous presentation, look at these four, and those are the meta brands, and they really dominate. So the Facebook family, it's very big. Um, however, like everywhere, you might have a little challenger. So that's TikTok. That's an interesting number. By the way, it's a September number, but it's unfair. TikTok has grown so much in the last 12 months, which is phenomenal. And because we only report the adult being 16 plus, that number is incredibly small in comparison to the real number. They claimed 1 billion last month. Uh, we don't believe in 1 billion, but they're close to the 1 billion still. The 400 million are probably 16, un, uh, under 16 rather than over 16. So that changes a lot of things in your perspective. And it shows how some people say, well, you know, this is it. You've got meta brands and nothing else. Lots of respect for Facebook and, and co. But it's not so in written in stone. Because you could say the similar thing for Snapchat. It's still growing and growing nicely. And they have a different uh, demographic profile. And remember, if you're in China, that doesn't apply. Or, as we heard it before, you could say Kakao Talk, Line, etc., etc. Geographically different. Um, where is RCS here? We as MEF stay trying to stay clear. Internally, we, we have a number. We didn't say externally. And we're going live. Just to avoid a bit of... Uh, issues, you never know. Where do you think that uh, RCS would, 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 would RCS appear on this slide? There are many more between WeChat, there are many more, especially Chinese uh, social networks we have that would be bigger than TikTok right now of a number still. Um, and Twitter is a bit of a surprise being there because pe most people think it's much bigger, but RCS, would it be there? Sorry, go back to the slide. RCS, anybody? Any takers? Any people? Oh yeah, we've got somebody, Asha from the beginning, Orange from the back. Okay, 
I can't hear, but so we, we got Mina, which is running. You know, Mina is young. If it had been me, I would still be there. So I was just pointing out that, first of all, you've got million instead of billion at the top. So oh, sorry. It's actually, you've done all your slides, yes. Yeah, and it, it's, it's no fashion. I mean, me Italian, two dot is actually <laughs> 2,500. It should be, in English, should be a comma. And in here, so it's 2,500 million. Thanks for telling. Yeah, right. Okay. We're not telling that they have 2.5 million because that would be a bit too <laughs> no. mean. But, but no. thanks for that. Um, I think he's about 205. Million 205. Or 250. 250 remember. That's good. Uh, at one point, GSMA said 1 billion. That was three years ago, and now 205. It is, yeah. And then it's 205. And I think between the two numbers, I would probably be close to your number than GSMA 1 yeah, billion. Yeah. But it's all a question of definitions, everybody. All numbers are always correct, especially mine. Um, anybody else would like to say higher or lower? Because that's a good, higher or lower RCS? I say make your own number. You, you just define it as you want. I'll put it together. Yeah, no? No, no, we just I'll tell you what. Yesterday we heard from one person here, was, uh, they, they, as a single aggregator, uh, in one country, they do one billion messages a month. And uh, there's the second aggregators that I know I can say, in one country, we do more than one billion. Actually, if you put together US, China, and, in, and uh, India, you get big numbers in RCS. I think RCS would definitely be on this. Um, I think it would be higher than 400 million by now. I'm, I, I'm not checking, but I, and I'm not saying it on writing anywhere. But I do think that it's surprisingly big, what we expect. Whether the channel is utilized or preference, that's another question. But whether people are not just receiving, and I'm, these are all active, so people are receiving some messages or sending some messages, and in some places is working. Brazil should have been also added to the list of countries. Oh my God, I have so much to tell you and I cannot stop and say what we just said, but SMS, you know, must have, you know, kind of dropping down on the list. But in terms of monetization, in terms of tools, in terms of usage, still dominating. If WhatsApp would have monetized its traffic last year, it would have almost made as much money as Facebook today as a group would make. So that, well, depends on how you do fair value. But based on your traffic, that would go from 20 to 60 billion of traffic in SMS worth value. And there would, you know, last year they made 80, 80 billion as Facebook as a group. They sit on a great potential, but they haven't monetized it yet. And that's okay. I won't go into the details, but that was a, a oh, sorry, I did stop. That was an interesting slide, I thought, because uh, it goes business and personal value. Check later, we refer to preference later. Okay, that's just what people receive rather than where we would like to receive. So you'll see different numbers coming next. Well, um, and I, we did say before, I, I think I'm gonna say the, the, the obvious here, the TikTok is young. Well, thanks me for this piece of advice. Um, but when you put it in, com in comparison to WhatsApp, you do realize what young means, it's really young. 31% uh, of the WhatsApp users are between 16 and 24, and it's 45% for TikTok. SMS is very similar to WhatsApp in many aspects, surprisingly so. But that's not that we got the wrong numbers because if you look at Snapchat, again, goes back to the profile <coughs> of TikTok. Oh, but wait a second, look at Facebook. Who is using Facebook in this? Who is using Facebook Messenger or Facebook? Mina, you're surprising. Yeah, me, me, Mina is a you know, younger representative, younger group because um, Facebook is a bit old, yeah. but it, obviously not for everybody is a, is a mass market product and so on. But the profile about Facebook as a, as a whole as been, is slightly older. Well, now we're talking about the questions I was asking. User preference, where do they prefer to receive messages? And there, surprisingly, email is really working. So receiving a message from a business, people reply email. And I, on, I can only imagine that part of that is about you're used to email. You expect that's a natural answer. Where should I get it? Well, on email, you know, I get everything on email. If I really, really drip down, I don't think that, you know, one thing is habit, another thing is where it could be better for you. But that's the answer. SMS is in second. WhatsApp is only third. More good news for, and then you've got everybody else, which is growing, helpfully. Uh, where would you like to send a message? When would you like to send a message to a business? Which channel would you use? Then email, still very big. 
But then you start to see a bit of a change. SMS is less relevant if you want to do P2A than A2P. We have a few challenges, and we know why they are, partly with the interactivity, etc. And if you look at, uh, again, the demographic, what, what it shows again is that, well, millennials uh, do more Facebook. They do a lot of things. The young people out there are born after 2000. The movers, the older uh, representative, uh, would do much more email per day and less SMS. Well, not much of it would surprise you. But it goes back to usage is one thing, uh, acceptance of a channel is one thing, and usage is another. And if you look at the US, and that's really what I'm starting to go back on, reach is not a problem. Uh, most of the, in the US, most of the user would have 6.7 social networks of some sort. And that means that if you're looking at how many users are unique to a platform, so can only be found on Facebook, 0.7%. How many people have only got Instagram, 0.1%. So you don't, it's not a rich question. It's a question of relevance. It's a question of how you want somebody there. Because those numbers are too small to be really meaningful for you. And that's where we talked about right now. We said how strong the Meta family is, but actually challenges are really working and working well, I would say. And they are successful, especially in some regions. So always look for the differences. But my little session was all about telling you, spend more time understanding these channels, even if you're working in only and you're not representing one of them. It's what we as an industry need to be much more familiar with. Oh, we have a question online from somebody. Ben says, how does customer service fit into conversational commerce and who is best to serve enterprises? Is it traditional messaging providers or perhaps, perhaps contact, center, contact centers experts with CRM integration? Ben, Ben Cole, always asking difficult questions, Dale. Uh, ben, it's, it's not fair. I'm, I'm just showing numbers. Now, it's a really worth discussion and, um, and I don't know the answer. Actually, most of these numbers are there, and I don't know. I think you're pointing out at one important thing, that we're really developing more than a simple buy off the shelf and I'll send you volumes, which can still work. We are moving towards bespoke solution, manage integration to CRM services. So I don't know who's best. Maybe you can, somebody else can tell me later. But I think everybody needs to improve. That's probably what I would take it. But before I leave you, because I only have, seems to be two minutes left, um, before I take over the rest of the day. Um, I have another little thing that I want to tell you. But there is this report written by Tim Green, which disappears from view. So he's the expert, but I'm taking all the credit, as I tend to do very often, uh, which you should all read and, um, and discover. What it pretty much says is that these 2020 for mobile in, uh, advertising and not just has been one of those years where we'll go into the calendars because things are changing dramatically. The concept of identity is changing. Apple changed its identifier for advertisers, which is the little tracker you use for apps, effectively. Very important. While at the same time, Google was phasing out third parties' cookies in Chrome, regulatory issues, multiple sites, etc. So current market developments are really changing because everything was based on these two pillars, pretty much. I won't go into all the history, but the report is there for you to do it. And what does it mean? Well, it means that you now have to opt in into apps for sharing your data and telling who you are uh, to, to Apple, which is a great thing. And there are solutions coming. Our members will be happy to tell you about all of these solutions. Uh, but really, the constant uh, for the last eight years has been a consumer trust study, a different study also available to you, which shows a different gap. We saw before the opportunity gap. You know, well, how much more people would like to use? And this is your threat gap. This is how much important certain things, such as respecting privacy, data security, you know, how much you like to control how data is used by the apps, and how much is really done or perceived. So people are very negative. That's like usually a 20% difference between them. That's not a sustainable model in an industry, so the identity questions are how we use data and how we do privacy. It's very interesting. Now, you could say a lot of things for the messaging industry, but if you compare that to, to the advertising industry, if it doesn't have a model now referenced, as we've seen, identity is changing, you're sitting on a great potential. Your ability to have first-party data or the brands would have got first-party data. If you're an aggregator, it's a, 
it's incredible. You're sitting on a potential of a diversion of traffic. You can actually really take some more traffic from the advertising market to here. Or you can create affiliation programs based on your knowledge base or your database base of the ability to communicate with some of them. And enriching profiles at the additional level, that kind of preferences. is something that this industry can do. Now, that leaves me with the last slide when I just said, Come and talk to us, pretty much. No, there is a lot happening, a lot you can do yourself. This is exciting again. If the growth is exciting, the opportunity that the changes in the advertising and the identity itself are threatening some of the business model, for sure, challenging for some, for sure, but a great opportunity to redefine a market which is worth hundreds of billions right now. With that, time to conclude our little sessions, pretty much by saying that Omnichannel, what we're discussing now, is really important. It reframes the industry. And it was seen with the merger and acquisition happening out, outside there. It really changes how we look at customers, but also how we look at us as an industry. We need to learn about the new competition. There's much more available right now and how that affects our business. But we also need to look at identity as a great opportunity to change some of the power games in the industry as well. Now. I cover 30 minutes. I believe that I've answered one question here. Any final uh, questions from you before they kick me out because I'm taking too much time? No question here, no question there. I think, Tim, I've done my bit. I'm, I'm, and, and only a few people left. I think uh, we kind of, uh, we haven't lost uh, um, many of them. But uh, I think all of that, in terms of activity and, uh, and so on, we will be discussing in three of our uh, list working groups. If you're already part of future messaging, fantastic. If you're part of the personal data and identity, well done. If you're not, I suggest you join that one, even for a couple of times. What they're talking is super relevant to you. And thirdly, there's a new working group on content and advertising where all of these things especially if the advertising side are discussed, I think you should be joining that one too. Lots of things. That's really it. And uh, Tim, come and take me away before I keep on talking.